right, welcome back. We've decided that instead of calling this Mobility Project or Mobility Wad, we'd have better success with the masses if we called it Mobility Gone Wild. Just kidding. All right, so here's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to work on solving a problem and thinking it through. One of the problems we see all the time in our gym is the front rack position. In fact, one of the, a local coach recently emailed me and said, help, can you film an MWOD about solving this problem? So here's how we think through this. Are we seeing the athletes getting into a good position from the setup? And if, what we're really doing is this arm is in flexion with a little extra rotation. Recently we tied the bands together. We did that horrific thing. We'll come back to that maybe. But as we start to think through this problem, what we really need to do is think, hey, where's the problem? Because as a coach, you know, the, I can't solve, or there's definitely some big kind of gross mobility issues that I can take off the table right away, but more to the fact of, I want to treat and mobilize where I'm seeing the big problems. Otherwise, I end up spending all my time doing this nit knowing thing. So, very first is, is the, does the athlete have the bar way up in the throat, and are they able to get good thoracic extension? So many of our athletes come into us after sitting at the front of the desk, or in this kind of slightly rounded thoracic position, and they can't get on the other side of the curve. And what ends up happening is they end up having to support this load in this kind of rounded position, and the, it's very easy to collapse through. Here's the pelvis. So what we want to do is we want to create a little thoracic extension, though, to be able to support that load. And now we have a bow uh, effect, and the, the, the system can be loaded this way. This way, it's going to easily collapse. This way, it's going to be stronger. So this is one of the reasons we need to make sure our athletes can get into some extension. Abs are on tight, extend through. So simple things like uh, the keg drill, thoracic opening on the double balls can often just allow the athlete to get to the bet, bet into a much stronger, more upright position. So that's one way of thinking about it. The other piece is uh, when we see horrific internally rotated shoulders, I'm in the dreaded DB position, then I don't have many options with my hands. My hands have to take just the brunt. And you'll know what I'm talking about when we see athletes and they're just smoking themselves out. In fact, if when I load up my hand like this, you can actually see this little tunnel between my carpal bones, A, the carpal tunnel. And uh, this is actually one of the few situations where we do get enormous compression through this little tunnel and area underneath this uh, retinaculum, which is a big band of connective tissue here, and it gets compressed. What we want to do is try to uncompress. This is a position of high neural tension. And uh, what's ended up happening is that I just get smoked. My nervous system gets hammered. In fact, this is a basically a neural tension position to see if we're having an athlete with a problem. I depress the shoulder, elevate the shoulder, and I can really kind of light up the athlete. And if you're having any athletes with anything that smacks of double crust symptoms, man, this will light them up. And you can see, if you have a problem doing this, or you get any weird symptom in this weird superhuman position, then chances are this is going to smoke you. So what we need to do is be able to get the elbow into a stronger position, and then still have the bar on the back of the chest, which is going to require flexion and extra rotation. When we see athletes missing full range of motion and making mechanical faults, that shoulder comes forward, and then we end up doing these horrible, horrible DB shoulder position. And a lot of good coaching comes out of, hey, my athlete can only jerk from this position. It's not any good. I need to be able to get into a stronger position. Go to Pierce Demas and watch that guy jerk. His, the bar is way back, all the way across on a nice shoulder shelf. And he's got a beautiful extra rotation. Even when he jerks or he catches the bar into the jerk position, shoulders are way back. Of course we're not saying it can be in the same position where I would jerk or bench press from, but I have a range of motion where I'm still going to have the shoulder forward and not be in this position. So the second piece is, how do, is this just a wrist problem? Are athletes so stiff through the wrist that they can't do anything? So we know that most athletes are going to end up with a flexion extra rotation problem. They're missing thoracic extension. So the poor little wrist, no wonder people hate front squatting so much. And which reminds me that when we see athletes all the time come into our gym and say, hey, I think I have an overhead shoulder problem when I overhead squat. And we're like, uh, by the way, it's not your shoulders, it's likely your hips. So making sure we're looking at the athlete upstream and downstream is an important part of this. So homework tonight, working on this problem, is let's mobilize flexion, extra rotation. Is the athlete having a hard time? Because the compensation for that is that shoulder comes forward. Is this a wrist, gross wrist problem? And is this a thoracic extension problem? So, you know, kind of as I think myself through this, very first thing is let's get our athletes into some kind of flexion extension problem or a flexion extension rotation issue. 
So is this pure flexion, just hanging out and opening? That's the most simple iteration. We all the time are pulling down and making the mistake as coaches to overcomplicate things. When we see a problem, what is the position of restriction mobilized in that position of restriction? And literally, just winding the athlete up into an open palm position, really working down. You can see that I am smoking tight here. Contract, relax, it's brutal. And I can obviously lower that down a little bit and hang it out. I can even pull the arm in a little bit and out. And I'll find that band of tissue where I'm tight, contract, relax, shaking. Ah. Don't do that, the girl's gone wild. And look at the difference already in one setup. All right, so there's homework number one. Homework number two is to go ahead and let's work on the wrists. Simple stuff. If this is the position we desire, man, can I give my athletes any homework? Can I load them up while they're sitting at their desk? Hey, by the way, we're going to open up your hands here because these are basically like your calves and you're smoked. Jeff Tucker just did a beautiful planche, planche, push-up progression on the CrossFit Journal. Take a look at that. Let's get our athletes working on some of these positions prior. So we start looking at gymnastics as skill transfer exercise, not just gymnastics for gymnastics sake, but anime athletes can be sitting at the desk and certainly be working on this position. If not, let's go ahead and take on the wrist piece. Love getting the band involved with this. I personally like to pull the, the wrist back, hands away. From, I block the hand here. So I'm going to go ahead and block the hand. The band pushes, and then I'm just going to fold them over. What ends up happening is I get a really distinct stretching through that piece of the capsule there, and I can kind of find those corners. Contract, relax, if I think it's muscular, I can just oscillate back and forth. And even just spending a second or two here prior to lifting, prior to that, uh, you know, that rack position, makes, it makes a big, big difference in terms of restoring that wrist flexion. All right? And then third, let's go ahead and get on the lacrosse balls. Bam. Let's open that stuff up. So mainly tonight, I'm going to give you a piece, really simple piece about, hey, how do I start to solve the problem? How do I treat what I'm seeing? This is the mistake athletes and coaches make all the time, even physical therapists. We don't want to play hump the lesion. We want to play what is the big elephant in the room because chances are it's the elephant in the room that's, that we need to deal with. We can deal with all the little small bits as we go along. Oh, I'm just getting all kinds of cracks back and forth, working on that position. You can even put the arms up, one piece, go hunt around, see if you can tie it in, do what we call that informed freestyle. But all in all, think through what you're seeing with your athletes. And if they're having a position that looks like this, it may not be the wrist position, it may be global position. All right, we will see you guys tomorrow.